Today, I'm doing literally just sitting and eating with me while I'm gonna talk about some stuff and ask some questions and just have a chilled time because I've had a bit of like a, a bit of a challenging week and I'm just a bit tired and I don't really have the energy all the time to like film a whole day um, and edit a whole day. So we're just gonna sit and eat. If you want to, you can grab something to eat, maybe challenge yourself a bit. You can comment what you're eating or you can send it to me on Instagram. Breakfast, snack, dinner, lunch, whatever, go get it. I'm actually doing something challenging because I'm sitting and eating on my own, which isn't something I really ever do because uh, I find it very hard. But I've got myself a bagel, a raisin and cinnamon bagel with honey and peanut butter. And yeah, I'm just gonna like scroll through my phone and answer some of your questions and topics and stuff that I got sent on Instagram and I'm gonna eat on my own but I'm not really on my own because you're here. How have you been recently? Well I just kind of touched on this um I started back at college this week and I also started the therapy that I was saying I was trying to get this week so it's been a bit of like a emotional difficult one. I have coped though. What do you want to be when you grow up and your dream job? Ah, uh, this is so funny because if you've been following me, you know like ever since the start of my channel and actually for like a few years now, I've got peanut butter all over my fingers. I've been saying like, my dream is to be a psychologist. I'm gonna be a psychologist. Um, I kind of have sacked that off. I'm um, not gonna be a psychologist. I don't want to be. It's not because I don't enjoy psychology. It's not because I don't want to help people. It's actually the opposite. It's an amazing job, obviously. But for me, like, it's quite removed from the actual moment when the person's struggling. So I've decided I want to be a nurse. Um, maybe a pediatric nurse, maybe a mental health nurse, maybe both. Because I just want to have more patient time and like be in the moment and actually helping people. I'm no longer going to be a psychologist. Pop five songs at the minute. And someone said, I'd love to hear more about your favorite songs. I've actually been listening to Spotify way more recently, which is really weird. Cause like when I was more unwell, I kind of stopped listening to like music properly. I just didn't, I mean, definitely got hair on my nose. I kind of lost interest in like everything and music was almost one of them. But I've actually written them down because like I, my memory is so awful. First one, probably the gold, but like the Phoebe Bridges version. Um, we all know I love Phoebe Bridges. And then I Love You It's a Fever Dream by The Tallest Man on Earth. That song, I don't know. I just love it. Greatest Comedian by Matt Maltese. I really want to go see him. He's performing in, um, Brighton, Meet Me at Our Spot by Willow and that other guy. I don't know his name, I just like the song. And then I found a song like two days ago called Tea, Milk and Honey by Opet. I really like it. Peanut butter is so sticky. My teeth are just like covered in peanut butter right now. I'm just gonna now like scroll through and just pick a random one. I love your style. Where do you find your clothes? I also had a question about like, what do I think of fast fashion? And I definitely think it's so much better to buy secondhand and be sustainable when you can. But actually like, it kind of angers me when people get really like angry at other people for not 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 buying fast fashion because like actually that's the most accessible thing that's the cheapest thing for a lot of people depop and like stuff like that i mean a it's kind of hard to find stuff in charity shops but i'll get onto that in a second b depop's like so expensive it's just not like actually affordable for a lot of people which is stupid because it's secondhand stuff so i you know as much as i would love for everyone to be sustainable i do understand that it's actually hard to not buy fast fashion sometimes that being said i went to charity shop the other day uh, and I got so much stuff I got this top and everything was like two or three quid and I was like thank you also it was all perfect quality um, and it all fitted me perfectly better than like the stuff off ASOS where they have a size guide so I was quite happy about that fave lunch at the minute I've actually been eating avocado on either crumpets or a sesame bagel like really often because I'm so I'm like I love avocado like I need to just abolish that fear I chose something today that I do actually also have a lot but it still challenges me a bit because it's kind of a sweet lunch and my, my brain's like that's breakfast food which I just basically am eating bagels all the time which is a good thing. Mm. Was I able to do my GCSEs? If so, what did I get? Wait, I didn't even answer the question about fashion, did I? Oh my God, my brain's all over the place. My favorite clothes shops are Monkey, Weekday, and Mango, probably, and maybe ASOS. Anyways, I'm so sorry. Were you able to do your GCSEs? If so, what did you get? I'm not gonna say my grades because I've always felt like quite comparative when people say their grades and I was like, I'm down on myself, but I did do them. I actually did them in hospital and managed to pass them all. So I did do them which I'm very happy about because it means I have some form of qualification. 
This one's like a bit random, but I'm here for it. Have you ever played tennis? I actually have. I used to do tennis lessons when I was younger. I say I did tennis lessons. It probably only went for like two months at the most. But oh my god, my hair is really annoying me. I'm definitely more of a racket sport person than anything else. Like, get me a bit of badminton. Bloody love squash. Squash is not my favourite. I have played tennis. Ah. Uh. Opinions of mint ice cream. One of the best. People that knock it, I don't know, like, I used to love peppermint arrow when I was younger and I've always loved mint chocolate, so there you go. There's the inside scoop. Do you follow a meal plan? It's hard to answer. My bagel's gone very cold, I'm gonna speed up. <laughs> By the way, I do usually eat faster than this, but obviously I'm chatting and I never normally chat as much. Do I follow a meal plan? Yes and no. I have, like, three meals and three snacks and I know roughly, like, what my meals, the size of my meal should be like, but no at the same time, like, the meal plans I used to have would be like two slices of bread and tuna and sweet corn filling or like one Kit Kat and a half and I'd be like, are you joking? I mean, they were fine when I was struggling, but then when I actually like wanted to recover, I was like, that's not normal. Kind of binned it. Oh my God. So no, I have my three meals and three snacks. I eat enough. I don't really follow a set meal plan though. Oh, the pandemic and how it has affected you. Now it's just gonna sound kind of bad, mm. but in some ways it really didn't affect me. Because to be honest, like I came out of hospital into the pandemic pretty much. So I'd already been isolated from my friends and not really out, gone out much. So I was quite used to it, but it did affect my care a lot because I couldn't see any mental health people face to face. And so obviously they, don't, they didn't really have a clue what was going on with me and I didn't get as much support as I probably needed to start with. But apart from that, it didn't really affect me that much. It was only when I started trying to recover that I was getting frustrated with the restrictions, but they were already starting to lift by then. So. It definitely was awful how it affected other people, but apart from my care, it didn't really affect me that much. Just clicked on the same one. Let's find a different one. Oh, I keep clicking the same ones. What would you write a kid's book about? I'm gonna change my battery one second. Hello, I'm back. Um, my battery was dying. What would I write a kid's book about? Now, do you know what? I've literally never been asked this, but to be honest, I think it'd be so good. It, this might have already been done. Like, it's probably not a unique idea, but wouldn't it be like great if there was kids books about loving yourself and about being kind to yourself and about forgiving yourself and eating whatever you want? I don't know. I don't know. Did anyone else go through a phase when they were younger where they just like wrote books? Like I fully like started like sci-fi novels with like deep plots and like really just deep stuff. And then I just forgot about them. Will you ever transition into non-ED related content? Yes and no. I keep saying that because first of all, I don't want my channel to be entirely about my eating disorder. What the fuck? <laughs> entirely about my eating disorder <laughs> because that's not who I am. It's a part of like my journey, but it's not who I am. But I also know that I can help people by sharing ED related content. So even if it's not about me recovering, like when I am recovered, because I will get there. Maybe to help other people recover. But also like I know that it comforts people to eat with YouTube because I've done that before. It's actually very comforting for me to just sit and have a chat because this is the least I've thought about food while I'm eating because I'm just in a conversation talking. And obviously like I'm challenging myself now by eating alone. So it, it, it like, it does help me at the minute, but eventually I won't make entirely eating disorder related content. It probably will still be foodie because I have always been a foodie and I enjoy cooking and not gonna lie, YouTube is a fun excuse to just do random 24 hour challenges. I look like a bunny. I look like I'm doing chubby bunny challenge. Can I like stop? What's something you do that helps when you're anxious? I have this one TikTok that I'm gonna put here that I literally just watch and it helps so much. Tattoos you want if you want any more. Do you plan on getting any more future tattoos? I love the ones you have. I got this one the other day. You're not gonna be able to see it because the light's kind of very bright right now. But it says just live. Yeah, I do want more. I feel like people talk about the tattoo bug where you'll just end up wanting more tattoos and to be honest, I do want more. There are more that I'd already known I've wanted for like years, but... Recommendations for educators for talking to our students about eating disorders. What I would recommend is that you make sure they're aware that the only eating disorder is not anorexia. And actually, anorexia is not even the most common eating disorder. There are so many other eating disorders that are way more common, they're just not talked about. It also isn't a weight disorder, it is a mental thing. And just also that the second they think they have signs of it, seek help because early intervention is so key. Ooh, part one done. I'm gonna get part two. Maybe like a packet of crisps. That's my usual go-to. Oh my God, okay. I've got a packet of these hummus chips because they're actually some of my favorite crisps. But do you know what? They're so bloody hard to open. If you were gonna take them out, I think like me and my mom would say you probably need to take a pair of scissors. 
but I'm a strong girl. So, do you still get check-ins for your eating disorder, like weigh-ins? If so, how do you feel about them? Oh my God, is the sun really bright or can I just not see because of the sun? I ha actually haven't weighed myself in about a month which is amazing for me because i was so obsessed with like having to know what my weight was i usually weigh myself on a wednesday and every wednesday for the past like two weeks there was something that just meant you know what like i, I it's gonna ruin my day and i want to have a good day so i just didn't do it and then this week i was starting college and i was like mm, no i don't need that like as i start college so i haven't weighed myself I will weigh myself next week because I do, I don't know, I, I don't want to get so scared of weighing myself that I never weigh myself, just in case I have to at the doctors or something. But um, weigh-ins did always make me feel worse. They are important, but they definitely make me overthink what I'm eating and everything. When actually weight fluctuations are so normal and your body will go up and down naturally. Uh, let's see. Why are you vegetarian? Many people with in the eating disorder say they use it as a way to restrict or feel in control. I'm vegetarian genuinely because I can't, I can't bring myself to eat a dead animal and this isn't to make anyone feel bad because if you feel being vegetarian would be restrictive for you don't be vegetarian because there is a very fine line between thinking you're doing it ethically and your eating disorder actually like enjoying it and getting away with it but for me i was never actually scared of meat it wasn't a fear food for me um i literally went vegetarian because i started like researching about like global warming and like sustainability and animal rights and stuff like that and i just i just genuinely went vegetarian for in my eyes, the right reasons. Aeroplane. Do you mind? Oh my god, it's so bright. What's it like being the older one at college? It made me so anxious to start with because I was like, everyone's gonna be younger than me and they're gonna be like, why is this girl like 18 and just like trotting around college in, in like year 12? But do you know what? Like in my mind, I'm there to learn. I'm there to get my A-levels. And it doesn't actually matter like if i'm older than people because i've generally always been the sort of person that could get on with anyone of any age like i could get on with like people that are way older than me but i also used to do like musical theater and be able to talk to i didn't do musical theater why do i always call it that i can't sing or dance acting and talk to people that were younger than me so it's actually fine also it's not like i run around going i'm 19 i'm two years behind nobody really knows or cares it's not obvious i don't think so yeah it's actually fine it did make me really anxious at first but nobody even cares what's your opinion about veganism would you like to become vegan in the future i know i just talked about vegetarianism veganism i couldn't do because that would be restrictive for me meat wise there's nothing i actually miss i can have dairy i choose to have oat milk because i genuinely prefer it but i know that like i would miss eggs i know that actually that would be restrictive for me but being vegan amazing if you're not disordered and you can go vegan it's so good for the planet my opinion on it is that it's fine oh my god i've actually answered like most of the questions suggestions on how to deal with recovering around disordered eaters this is so hard remind yourself that actually disordered eating isn't normal even if a lot of people do have disordered eating it's not what humans are meant to do we weren't meant to like live our life at the lowest end of a healthy weight we were meant to like have full body functions and periods and eat what we want when we want and what we fancy it's only like diet culture that is like profiting off you having a disordered relationship with food so so what everyone else is doing shouldn't affect you. That's their life. If you want freedom and you want to be happy, then you've got to fight for your own food freedom. Like you're the only one standing in your way of it. If they are struggling, then they're struggling, but it shouldn't affect you. This one made me laugh. Have you got a secret partner? <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I don't think I have mental space for that. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm just about managing to balance things as it is. Were your friends worried about you when you were at your worst and how did they react? I think my friends were worried about me even if I wasn't at my worst. Like my friends are very intuitive and very caring and they were worried that I was damaging myself. People don't only care about you when you're at your lowest and at your worst. And actually my friends never gave up on me and they always like came to visit me and spoke to me and told me that like I could get better and everything. They, they didn't give up on me. None of them ever were like, yeah, well, you're never gonna recover. Like they were all had hope for me. And yeah, they were just always really supportive. And I was very mindful if they had struggled with they're eating not to talk about it too much and like trigger them so i think that helped but yeah i live in canada and don't understand british school can you explain a levels etc so basically we have infant school um and junior school which is sometimes mixed into primary school so that basically goes from age four to age 11 and then from 11 to 16 
you're in secondary school and it starts at year seven then it goes year eight and then year nine and then in year 10 and year 11 you're doing your GCSEs which I don't know what it stands for does it stand for anything maybe but I don't know what it stands for and that's like your qualifications to then go on to study specific subjects at A level which we call college or some people call it sixth form so that's two years of doing three or four subjects that you want to specialize in so say I've chosen psychology sociology and criminology because that's what interests me a levels is basically like a stepping stone to uni. Who are your favourite recovery YouTubers or YouTubers? Who are my favourite recovery YouTubers? Who are my favourite recovery YouTubers? Oh, I would just say YouTubers in fairness to me. Who are your favourite recovery YouTubers and YouTubers in general? Don't really watch recovery YouTubers to be honest. Although I did watch some of Alzani's videos and I thought they looked like good because she showed a very like freeing relationship with food. Generally, I watched Grackle, Olivia Neal. I love Hannah Marling, she's really funny. Who else? I used to love Emma Chamberlain, but like I watched her when she was still in like high school. You know, she used to do like secondary school vlogs. I used to watch those, but I don't really watch her anymore. Um obviously Molly Jones. I don't really watch that many YouTubers, kind of weird because like people consider me a YouTuber, but I'm just I'm not really watching them. Do you have a skincare routine? Your skin is so clear. You know what? I feel like a fraud when people ask me this. Like, my skincare routine is basically doing barely anything to my skin because my skin's so sensitive and it will break out if I do much to it. I am also have been on acne cream since I was like 13 because I had acne and now I'm on an antibiotic. So if my skin looks clear, texture wise, the lack of dryness and the fact my pores have got smaller has because I've improved my diet, which means eating fats, eating enough. When I was like very unwell, my skin was so dry, you could see every single pore, it was just awful. So texture wise, it's got better because I've eaten, not because of what I've done to my skin. But acne wise, no matter what I eat, how much I drink, um, I'm prone to acne. So my skincare routine is actually medical. <laughs> Opinions on tattoos that have no meaning. Who really cares? I mean, all of mine do have meaning. And I always thought, oh no, I'd never get one that doesn't have meaning. But like, who really cares? It's art on your skin. If you like the look of it, get it. Not everything has to be so deep, you know? Or maybe I actually have answered all of them now. I probably will have some fruit after this, but I've actually answered all the questions now. And I don't want this video to be like 40 minutes long. So I hope you were kind to yourself and nourished yourself during this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was very chilled, not a lot going on, but sometimes you just need that, you know, because I do love doing YouTube, but actually like I do need to focus on keeping myself stable and doing okay at college and stuff. So, you know, I can't always like film and edit. It's, it takes a lot more time than people realize. But anyways, I just ate lunch on my own. Go me. Whoop quite proud of myself for that probably something i should do more often because i'm an adult and i need to like take responsibility and i obviously do take a lot of responsibility but my parents are pretty much always there so i hope you enjoyed uh i love you and i will see you all soon <laughs>